Hello everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming to a brand new episode of the Warriors Journal. Today we are discussing a topic that most people, most people on dialysis are excited about and they want to know more about it. And uh, the topic is uh, peritoneal dialysis. And we are blessed to have with us a very experienced nephrologist, Dr. Urmila Anand. Uh, Dr. Urmila is a consultant nephrologist uh, in Hyderabad and uh, she'll be sharing her views with us and her expertise with us today on uh, peritoneal dialysis and how can uh, patients with CKD make the most out of it. We are also blessed to have with us Shanti Rajmohan. So she has been doing peritoneal dialysis since 18 years now and she has had her experience since that she would like to share with us and uh, so we are blessed to have both of you here and uh, let you. us start. Over to you, Dr. Rumina. Good evening uh, to all the people who have joined today through Facebook to discuss something about peritoneal dialysis, which is actually a topic very close to my heart. And uh, I would like to, in, at the very beginning, like to mention that uh, one of the first pioneers of peritoneal dialysis, the pioneer of peritoneal dialysis in India is actually from Chennai, Dr. George Abraham, who actually trained me in peritoneal dialysis. And not only he told me about peritoneal dialysis, but he sort of inculcated that passion which he has for this mode of therapy. I hope in the next 20, 25 minutes, I will be able to sort of convey that to you, how important this modality of treatment is for patients who have end-stage kidney disease. Now, end-stage kidney disease has a lot of options. And if you look into it, most of our patients in our OPD actually come and say, doctor, I have kidney disease and can you help me? And if you realize in India, most of these patients, actually almost 16% of our patients who come to our OPD in nephrology practice, data from India show that they have end-stage chronic kidney disease and almost 70% of them come on stage four, stage five. And about 50% of them come at the last stage. So at that time, we rarely have any options to, of prevention. But most of us, many nephrologists will agree with me. We are almost always sort of talk about or discuss about hemodialysis, transplantation, or peritoneal dialysis. I'm sure most of you know about all three of them. Today, we will discuss peritoneal dialysis as a modality of treatment. And the commonest form of peritoneal dialysis that we have in India is something called CAPD, that is continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. Continuous means the modality is continuous over 24 hours. When I go through you later, I'll tell you in India, it is not. Sometimes we keep the night, we don't dialyze during the night. That is a form of night dry peritoneal dialysis. Ambulatory means you can dialyze throughout the day. You can move around, you don't, you're not, chained to your room home or to your hospital. Now, the first question everybody asks me is, doctor, how does peritoneal dialysis work? Everybody, and today the talk was also, is peritoneal dialysis effective? To understand that, you all need to understand how does kidneys work? But this is the most important thing. When the blood enters the kidney, it has a lot of waste. The waste goes through the filter, forms to all the small, small one million nephrons, forms urine and urine is drained out in the bladder. And at the end of the day, the bad blood actually is returned back with the clean blood. So the most important function of kidney is to remove waste products. That's a main job. But you need to understand that's not everything. The kidney also senses how much of extra fluid you have in your body or you have less fluid. And based on that, the body, the kidney, if you have a lot of fluid, extra, it tries to remove it. If you have less fluid, it tries to conserve all the fluid and you pass less urine. So just not waste product. It is very important for fluid control. And the third important thing, because of its effect on removing salt, excess salt, excess fluid, it plays a major important role on blood pressure. So that besides that, it is not just an organ of removing things. It also sort of makes red blood cells. It makes your hemoglobin because if you realize as the kidneys fail, hemoglobin comes down and it worsens when you are on hemodialysis. So the kidney gets a little stressed. Now, if you understand that, now you understand how we sort of use the body, a peritoneal membrane 
as a for peritoneal dialysis now peritoneum is a thin curtain like structure which covers all the organs in the abdomen and it's like a curtain when it is not used it's all fine and covering the organs but if you fill the tummy with water or the abdomen with water it can just open up and it opens up almost to six meter so you can understand that we have a membrane which is so big that which can work like a filter almost similar to that of the kidneys and through this peritoneum it removes all the waste products similar to how the kidney worked not only that if you add some glucose extra to the fluid or make this fluid a little stronger it sucks out the fluid so if you want you can remove more water and if you don't want then you keep a little lesser concentration of glucose you don't remove water similar to the function of the kidney and th that is how we do if you use small strength bags or the PD fluid medium strength or strong depending on that you can remove fluid from the body and Shanti will tell you you can remove anything between 500 ml to even one and a half liters of fluid in a day so that is the biggest advantage this from this form of dialysis and so unlike the kidney this peritoneal membrane does the all the three functions that is diffusion removal of salt osmosis removing of fluid under pressure and artery filtration if you want using pressure you remove more water so now you understand the same membrane actually works in doing all the functions of the kidney and it also helps us maintaining the hemoglobin because in this kind of this kind of dialysis there is no blood loss there is no repetitive puncture of needles in your veins and we don't lose blood every day so this is the advantage the next question my patient says what is required what do I need if I need to do CAPD or peritoneal dialysis because many patients have a fear that this journey of dialysis where you have to take care of yourself may need a lot of things but actually it is not so because all you need is no sophisticated equipment you can if you want a machine you all you need is a catheter which is to be placed in your abdomen connected to some tubes which is connected to the connector or the transfer set and this is all the equipment that you need if you want to do manual PD and it is not painful you are not going to do anything all you need fill up water in your tummy remove the water after four to six hours so this is the catheters that we have some of these catheters actually are put like this some of them T the common one is which we use a 10 cough catheter and it is sort of anchored through your abdominal wall so it is fixed it doesn't come out or move out so that's the biggest advantage and there are various catheters there is a straight peritoneal catheter this is the swan neck catheter this is which is bent together then you have coiled catheters and then this is the toronto western catheter which dr georgie would have seen when he was in toronto about 30 years back so next question is why do i do CAPD? why do my patients need CAPD? what is it that we benefit when we think of doing peritoneal dialysis see if you are looking to what we have talked about before this is an excellent mode of removing toxins and metabolic waste a very gentle continuous way of removing your poisons it by removing it, it removes and improves your uremic symptoms you stop feeling better and you don't stop feeling sick like the way you do because of its capability to remove fluids and the fluid sometimes can add extra electrolytes so it improves your fluid and electrolyte balance just like the kidney one of the better advantages of this form of dialysis because of your doing at home and uremia corrects you can almost build a good nutrition this is with a caveat because if many patients in india i worked in bombay are vegetarian you will understand that on pd you lose a little bit of protein so you need to improve your diet in fact shanti and all of my patients will tell you the dietary restrictions on hemodialysis are actually non-existent in pd so it makes your life much easier if you are on pd you seem to eat a better you can eat many things and hence it may has an in impact on your quality of life and overall shanti is a big example that your survival also improves so when you choose PD and why doctors advise PD, these are the common and there are various other reasons which we will think talk of when we move around. It is also a treatment of choice. I think I believe 
for all patients with end stage kidney disease. This option has to be given to all patients. It's like a cafeteria approach. We mentioned three, transplant, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis. Patients should be discussed about all three modalities and patients should choose in most of the time. There are very little to choose between these three. Sometimes of course transplant is definitive, but between the two forms of dialysis, I think it, a patient should make an informed choice. It is very good with patients who have urine output, who have some urine. This form of dialysis maintains your urine output. And as my professor, I have also worked in Toronto, Dr. Joan Bergman used to say, whatever little urine you pass, whether it's 10 ml or 100 ml, it's worth its weight in gold. Mm -hmm. Hemodialysis, unfortunately, takes away that. And you, many patients will tell you, after a year or two, you don't pass urine. So you lose that capability to void. But with PD, that function stays for a long time. A choice for diabetic kidney disease, simpler and easier. And of course, patients with bad heart, this is a much better form of dialysis because as we said, it's a gentle form of treatment. Older patients who would like to have problems with vascular access or other issues, I think do much better on PD and can do much better and survive better on PD. Patients whom, whom we cannot use heparin or other forms of anticoagulation, which is used three times a week when you are on hemodialysis, like you have a risk of stroke, you have a risk of bleeding, you have uncontrolled peptic ulcer. In those also, PD is a better choice. And in children, who will want your, our children to be tied to a hospital three times a week, coming into a dialysis unit, mixed with adult patients with all their problems and regularly being concerned about other issues. Children can go to school, can dialyze on their non-school hours, and they often do better. Their growth is much better. Their nutrition is much better when they're on PD. However, PD is not for all patients. So you need to, when you discuss your doctor, with, when your doctor says CAPD, he must, must have thought of all these problems and would have discussed with you. If you have had multiple abdominal surgeries in your childhood or adulthood, so then it can cause additions and then the Peritoneum loses ability to open up like a curtain. It's fixed, so you don't have enough filtration surface, so your dialysis will be inadequate. Patients who have infl inflammatory bowel disease, active diverticulitis, the bowel is inflamed, so bacteria can pass from the bowel into the peritoneum and can lead to increased risk of infection. If you have small, small hernias, and if you fill your tummy with water, the hernias pop out. So, it is not an absolute contraindication. I have had patients whom we have corrected this hernia and then put them on peritoneal dialysis. Similarly, cancer patients of abdomen who have a colostomy, a bag outside when they pass tools to that. This kind of dialysis is a little challenging. Again, not cannot be done, but can be done. But there are risks of infection. People with bad lung who have obesity, if you fill your stomach with a lot of water, it makes you breathing problem difficulty. So those patients may not do well on PD. And patients who have very bad vessel vascular disease, especially in your leg, if your blood flow, seen with advanced diabetics. Now, if you put water in your stomach, the blood flow gets diverted into the abdomen for filtration purposes. Then the blood flow to the legs come down. That may worsen your peripheral vascular disease. And any patient who does not understand the significance of his illness and treatment is better not offered a self-care treatment like peritoneal dialysis. The next question is, how is the procedure done? Many people will say, what are the ways to do it? How to do it? In fact, this is the commonest procedure, manual. I, I will emphasize mostly on manual because many patients in India, because of financial issues, are usually on manual. What you see is this is what you need. This is the bag filled with fluid, the fresh fluid, which has to be entered into the abdomen. These are all the clamps because you cannot just fill it like that. There are certain procedural uh, techniques which has to be followed. This is the cap which is connected to the transfer set, mini cap. So these are the things you need. And the procedure, I'm sure if you opt on to PD, a trained PD nurse will train you. And if you don't have that much of a physical disability, you can do this treatment yourself. Many of our patients, actually workers in various companies in Bangalore and all, had a PD room. And they could, during lunchtime and all, do their exchange while continuing to work. This is one of the biggest advantage of PD. So this is the solution bag. This is the drain bag. You have to, this is the connection in which you need to pull out 
They will show you how to do it and connect to the patient's PD cat. This is the transfer set through which you connect. So this transfer set is connected to your abdomen along with your peritoneal dialysis catheter. Now, where can you do it? You can do anywhere. You can, you need some steps to maintain safely safety, but you can do it anyway. We have patients who are doing it at workplace. I have patients who are doing it in their schools. So it is not that necessary that you need a highly sterile, like a theater like atmosphere or operation theater where you need to do. You need a clean room, which is well lit and there will be no movement of people inside out. Many a times in India, we don't want fans to be there, but that also is not major use. You should have a work surface which can be clean, which, which will be, you can clean with antiseptic and it doesn't corrode or something like that. And you should have a sink nearby where you need to wash your hands. That's all. This is a, not a sterile technique. It is a clean technique. All you need is to wash your hands regularly and properly. Your PD nurse will train and let you know and Shanti will also tell you what to do. And when do you carry? Actually, if it's a manual PD, you can have three exchanges or four exchanges. Usually you start in the morning, then you do sometimes around afternoon and then again in the night. So that sometimes if you are a patients who have a slow exchange membrane, you can even do it overnight. But what is more important, which I have learned, eat your food before you do your exchanges. Because if you fill your stomach with water, you feel so heavy that you don't feel like eating. So morning, do your breakfast, then do your exchange. Second one, have drain out your fluid, keep your stomach empty. Do you need a drain back for all this? And then you have your lunch and do it. Similarly, have your dinner and do it. Because it prevents it. Many of them feel so heavy and feel full that they don't eat. So sometimes it's better to do your lunch meals before your or in between your exchanges. There are three um, parts of the PD exchange. One is you have to fill the fluid. Then you let it stay there for about the time. Doctor will tell you sometimes it's four hours, sometimes it's eight hours. Then you have to drain. These are the three major parts of it. But then there are ways of doing. The first thing that you need to know, see if you, it seems very easy, like you fill the fluid, let it stay for somewhere in the peritoneum, all this membrane exchange, and then you drain it. So you fill it up, drain it out. But this is not as simple as this, because in there are situations where you need to understand as to how to do it. So before you procedure every day, check your weight, check your vital signs, if you have any fever or symptoms, alert your doctor, look at the bag, look at the expiry date, look at the fluid color. I will tell you about what is important of the fluid color. Look at the consistency of the bag. Many a time, not in our country, but in areas in North where it's cold, it's better to warm the dialysis. And it is dry heating. Don't have to put it in a microwave or somewhere else. You just keep it back out a little bit and let it raise to a temperature more than 25 degrees. So that when you This is the most important thing we'll, uh, Shanti will tell you. The first thing that you do is not fill. First you drain it. And after you drain, then you do something called flush before fill. So that the whole tubing is actually cleared of air or any kind of other bacteria or something. And then you put the fluid and you dwell it. So this is it. First you drain out from the peritoneal cavity. When, and when you infuse, you do a flush before fill. After that, disconnect everything and cap your uh, transfer set and let the fluid stay. Anywhere between four hours, six hours, eight hours. This is something your doctor will tell you. You can do everything. This is ambulatory. You can move around, you can go around and then you can do this. And this is done actually every day. So seven days a week. The whole exchange actually takes about 20, 30 minutes. So all you are giving is 20 to 30 minutes, three times a day or four times, depending on your requirement. It is not like you're tied to a bed on hemodialysis for four hours, three times a week. Now the drain fluid is something which you check very carefully. And that is what you should look and you should alert your doctor if you see something which is not very good. This is how your fluid should look like. Absolutely clear. You can read behind the paper and this is what everybody will tell you. When you keep your bag, this is how it should be. Then you have this cloudy fluid, which suggests that there is an infection. Then you have something like bile, as if the whole bile has come out in your tummy, suggestive of some perforation in your gut, 
these are all medical emergencies there are times when blood may be seen in the fluid then don't get worry if you are a lady and you are menstruating sometimes the blood may be there during your ovulatory period or during your menstruation so this is okay this is called hemoperitoneum occasionally you see milky white fluid they can be because of some drugs that you are taking or it may suggest that some kind of medical infection like tuberculosis so it's very important when you're doing this look into this and this is a it just takes five minutes and you can always don't neglect this and alert your doctor after this so the prescription which your doctor will write how many exchanges usually three in india time four to six hours sometimes you need a longer strength of the pd solution depending on how much water you want to take out most often your doctor will adjust, adjust ask you for a test called pet peritoneal equilibration test which tells you what kind of membrane you have if you have a very rapid and a fast membrane then you don't keep your fluids for long because if you keep it for long most of it will come out but then again rest of it again will go back into your blood but if you have a slow membrane then you can keep your fluid for longer period of time nowadays of course sometimes pet is not required because if you put it for four hours and you find out how much fluid is coming out it gives you an average idea what kind of a membrane and depending on your lifestyle and on your finances, you can do your PD yourself or you can connect yourself to the night with a machine called automated PD. This gives you much, much more freedom and allows a lot of flexibility in your prescription if you are on automated PD. Now, this is what they always ask. What are the types of peritoneal dialysis? The PD is depending on the number of exchanges and how many hours and when are you doing that defines your types of peritoneal dialysis. This is the night one when you connect to a machine and you do rapid one hour, one hour, maybe four exchange or one or two hours. You connect to two five liter bags, that is 10 liters of exchange of fluids. Then you can do two hours, four exchanges, eight hours. Then you sleep in the night and daytime, you're free to do whatever you feel like. This is called nocturnal intermittent peritoneal dialysis. It is not continuous. But sometimes this may not be enough for removing your poisons or your fluid. Then what you do is you do the night one, then put one bag inside and fill it with fluid. And when you connect it to the night, you don't have to take it out in the daytime. Your stomach is full with two liters of fluid. And in the night, when you are connecting again to the machine, the machine drains it first. As we all discussed, the drainage is the first thing. This is called continuous cyclic peritoneal dialysis. You're using the cycler, but your dialysis is 24 hours, just like the kidney veins. Then there is another one, which is called continuous ambulatory peritoneal. You are not using a machine. You are doing exchanges, two liter exchanges over four to six hours. You do in the daytime and then you connect in the night. The night one is a little longer. You don't get up in the middle of the night to drain, but you sleep for six to eight hours and then drain it. Now in India, because of her body size and being a smaller person, we can get away with this three. So it is actually not a continuous procedure, but it is a form of ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. If you do all the four exchanges or you are on three exchanges with one of the third exchange for longer period of time, then it is another form of continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. This is often, you don't need to connect a machine for four or five hours. It's only when you are doing rapid exchanges that you connect for machine. The CAPD is actually a manual form of dialysis. Now, these are for the doctors. There are various forms you modify. You can do intermittent, then you can do a single exchange, then you can do two exchanges. These are all depending on the number of exchanges, the duration, all depends how you do on dialysis, how your peritoneum behaves. Many people have asked questions, what if your PD fails? Rarely your PD fails. You, it is your doctor who fails you because he cannot make the diagnosis and tell you what are your exchanges. There is tremendous flex flexibility in PD exchanges. You need to understand what are the problems that you have, where is the problem, is it the water which is excess or is it the removal of the poisons and you can modify and sort of juggle with your prescription. Sometimes you leave a little bit of fluid in the tummy, always. It stays, that is called tidal PD. That means a little bit of fluid actually continues the exchange, actually continues the removal of the poison. But the commonest in India is actually CAPD, that's what we discussed. And the next form is the automated one. When you sleep in the night, you connect to the machine. This is the solution, the five liter bags, 
which connects to a machine and you program your PA, how many hours of dialysis, how much of time per exchange, and the machine does it. And in the if you want to keep some fluid in the daytime, the machine itself, when you wake up, will fill your stomach, abdomen with the water, in the night again, it will drain out. So this is the automated PD. These are the common forms which we do. And as we discussed, the exchanges are usually four bags or three bags in CAPD. This is over one liter exchanges, 10 exchanges, sometimes 12 liters when you add up a two liter bag for the daytime. The next question, what are my advantages? Now the advantages, I think you must have understood by the most of it by it now. It is very easy. You don't need any sophisticated equipments. Can be done at remote places. When I was in Australia, PD was done at places where there were no hospitals. Patients staying about 600 kilometers far away from any hospital. They were done independently. They, you have your mobility. And the most important thing I realize of PD is self-care. You are responsible for your care. And when you are responsible for your care, you often take care of yourself. You are not dependent on your doctor. You don't let, you know, you don't let everything to given it to somebody else's hand. No, your health is your choice and your responsibility. As we said, treatment for children, because it's a gentle process, removes a lot of fluid, can remove a lot of salt. It is very good for blood pressure control and patients who have unstable heart better quality. And as we said, you're not going to the machine, hemodialysis machine regularly. You're not going into a unit where there are 100 patients of various forms of infectivity and you're connecting every day, you're connecting to a machine. So the hemodialysis actually increases the risk of bloodborne infections like hepatitis B and C. So the PD does not have those kind of risks. Definitely gives you a better survival. And it is often considered for youngsters as a bridge to transplant. What happens is if you're going to be transplanted in the six months to one year, prefer not to go to hemodialysis. You avoid getting infections. And secondly, you maintain your residual renal function. Some amount of function is there. And if that is there, your results with transplantation are much better. Now, everything is not hunky-dory. There may be some disadvantages. The dis disadvantages, which can be because of technical problems, when you, the fluid does not come out, most often can be managed very easily, but the commonest thing that we forget when the PD does not work or the fluid does not come out is constipation. So please don't be constipated. Tell your doctor, use medicines. If there are bloodstained effluent, don't worry. Initial stages you can have. And sometimes if you put in a fluid very rapidly, cold fluid, and you try to drain it out, sometimes you may get a shoulder pain. These are all easily handled. So because we put a lot of fluid, you feel, you don't feel hungry. And as I mentioned, you lose protein, but this can be sorted out. You eat a lot more protein and your diet can be much more liberalized. The problem is because most of the PD fluids contain glucose. So you absorb that glucose that can worsen your lipids. But nowadays there are fluids which are not absorbed, like something called icodextrin. So you don't need any glucose absorption. So if you have cholesterol issues, then you can take exchange one bag without glucose to icodextrin. And sometimes because of an extra fluid, the heart problems can worsen. And in India, we have realized because of any way our nutrition is bad, if you lose a lot of protein, you, and if you're a vegetarian, you run a very high risk of malnutrition. So if you're going to be on PD, you have to promise yourself that you've got to eat well. There are infectious complications, people were saying, but let me tell you, the kind of patients we have in India, India and their interest in their own treatment Infections in India, a complication of peritoneal dialysis. The PD peritonitis happens once in 16 months. So if you're on dialysis, you have a chance of getting peritonitis in five years. So if you're careful, you may not get. But there are small, small infections where the catheter comes out. You have some exit site infection. I put some pictures, look into it. If you have them, tell your doctor. All it requires is some kind of dressing and local antiseptic antibiotics. But more important worry is if the catheter is tunneled inside through into the abdomen, if you develop infection in the tunnel, that requires medical attention and you sometimes may need injection or even removing the tunnel, the catheter, because tunnel infection can spread inside the abdomen and you can develop peritonitis. Peritonitis is a common infection where patients have abdominal pain, vomiting and the fluid, the drainage looks cloudy, the picture which I saw, showed you. When you have these things, Approach your doctor, 
start doing rapid exchanges. Most of them say you remove all the muck from your abdomen by doing rapid exchanges. Doctor, if you're stable enough, can advise antibiotics at home. You can use interperitoneal pathway, that is you, through the pipe itself, you can give antibiotics. But if you're clinically sick, you may need a few days of admission for your treatment. And if your infection does not get controlled, and if your PD fluid shows that you have a fungal infection, sometimes you may have to remove the catheter. But don't worry, most often than not, you can again put the catheter back after four to six weeks later and start your infection. Now, the final question that everybody asks, and as a doctor, is PD effective? And I think I have been able to convince all of you, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very effective, very safe, unfortunately, very underutilized form of treatment in country. So to, to summarize, peritoneal dialysis is a treatment job for many patients. And I believe for everybody, this treatment should be offered. Long-term outcome with PD is as good, if not better in hemodialysis. And you must have realized many advantages. The most important that I as a nephrologist feel is the self-care and the independence which we can give our patient. We want them to be free of us. These are diseases which long last lifelong and we don't want them to be beholden to us. We want them to take responsibility of their care and take, do well. And I have realized any patient who is independent, who is responsible and committed to his care invariably do well, whether they are on transplant or peritoneal diet. And as we said, treatment of choice in many age group of patients and many forms of cardiovascular queries. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And I think Shanti will be the best person to take queries. And if there are any medical issues, I'll support her. But I think she knows more than any one of us. So thank you very much for uh, kind attention. Thank you, doctor. <clears throat> Thank you so much, doctor, for such valuable information. Now, we have some questions from the Kidney Warriors community, and uh, I would request Shanti to continue with the questions, and uh, we can go ahead with it. Uh, will you ask me the questions, or do I have to just... No, no, you, you have the list of questions. You can continue with that, right. with Dr. Romina. Yeah. Yes. Uh, see, the first question that I got was, uh, is PD suitable for patients if urine output is zero? Yes, it is. Uh, it is not so bad because when I started PD in 2003 till 2011, I had urine output and then slowly dwindled. And now there's no urine output. But uh, what, uh, what we should understand here is that instead of the urine coming from the bladder, our peritoneal liquid removes the urine and the toxins with it. Uh, the second question is, uh, I've heard abdominal infections are common with peritoneal dialysis. Is it true? Actually, no. If you are careful, then it is not going to happen that way. Okay, they, the nurses will teach us, you know, how to do our hand wash routines and what we should do when we are doing our dialysis procedure you just follow that the hand wash routine is less than three minutes they teach you how to do it like how for covid now they're telling they're teaching all of us you know how we should do this do this it's the same thing which i've been doing for 18 years you do it properly you come though dr urmila was telling that we uh, don't have to switch off the fans what i do is as a precautionary measure i switch off the fan and then start my dialysis and then switch it on again, especially in summer because it becomes very hot. If you take care of your hygiene routines and, routines and cleanliness routines, your risk of infections are very low. You won't get it. Uh, how long can one live with peritoneal dialysis? Well, let's see, you know, I've, I've been on PD for 18 years now. And I'm sure it can go on because... Uh, Dr. Georgie, who is my nephrologist, has told me that when he started PD in Canada and he got trained for it, he has seen a woman who has survived for 25 years on PD. Okay, she's even had children on PD. So I think uh, life is almost normal, you know, 
when you are on PD compared to hemodialysis. In hemodialysis, you feel very weak, you know, and you're susceptible to a lot of infections. Each time you go into the hospital and come, there's a lot of blood loss. Uh, your rate of, uh, uh, you know, nutrition is very low because whatever you eat, each time the machine does the dialysis, it doesn't realize, you know, that this is protein. It has to be left inside and things. It removes everything. It removes the toxins. It removes your protein, your minerals, your uh, vitamins and everything. So you feel extremely weak after a hemodialysis session. But in PD, that's not the case. You know, slowly we can start improving our appetite. Yes, initially, like Dr. Urmila was telling, you know, I used to have this shoulder pain every time I was draining the fluid. So I used to get really scared. You know, and then when I asked Dr. Georgi, so he drew and he showed me. See, the reason why you get the shoulder pain is because as the fluid is draining, there's like, you know, it's like a vacuum getting created. So for those two minutes till you start filling again, you have that. But after six months, that shoulder pain disappeared. Initially, see, our body is not used to having two liters of fluid. It's like having a baby inside continuously. But after a few months, you know, you get used to it. Indeed, now I like to have my tummy filled with the fluid. Simply because, you know, there's dextrose in it. It keeps you active. It keeps you up and about. And uh, like Dr. Urmila was telling, yes, initially your uh, capacity to eat comes down. You know, you don't feel like eating much because you feel you have this sense of uh, uh, being filled. You know, you eat a little bit. That's because of the uh, peritoneal fluid that exerts pressure on all your organs, you know, your stomach, your intestines. So any little food or, uh, you know, uh, fluids that you take, it looks like, you know, you feel full. But after half an hour, you will feel better. Then, see, that is why our nutritionist always recommends that we eat in small quantities, more number of times, in, instead of trying to, eat like we used to eat earlier, you know, like have a full meal. Instead, break it down to two or three meals and have it. Then I don't think you'll have a problem. And your nutrition levels really come up. They have uh, Mercera injections, you know, which can be used for our, um, uh, for increasing erythropoietin, which uh, creates blood in our system. Uh, because the kidneys are the ones who have been doing it when they were okay. Now, since that is not there, this is a hormone which we take as an injection. Now, you do these things properly, there's not going to be any problem in your PD uh, life. <clears throat> is peritoneal dialysis painful? No, not at all. And, uh, right now, you know, for me, it's become a part of life. Like, it's like I brush my teeth, then I do my dialysis. I go out, have my breakfast. I do all my household chores. I don't have any problem. And I walk and I, uh, you know, I am into organic farming. I go to my field. I do a lot of work there and I travel back. It takes two hours up and down. It's not a problem at all. And it is not painful. You've got to be careful with your uh, catheter, etc. Uh, will my insurance cover PD? I'm really sorry. I don't know because I've never used insurance for my PD. But uh, I'm sure you can uh, get in touch with a few people who will be able to help you out. Uh, can I talk you to you ma, one minute, ma, Shanti? Yeah. Insurance covers PD, ma. Nowadays, oh, insurance it covers okay. all PDs. Okay. Earlier days, we used to have literally struggled, but most yes. of them have okay. now accepted it. In yes. fact, the government, uh, Arogishri in Kanat, I mean, Telangana, okay. actually covers PD also. Wonderful. You know what, Dr. So PD is uh, accepted now. Yeah, Dr. Georgi has really, uh, you know, represented us so many times to the government. Yes. Both the but now the government of India has actually put PD as a, a mm. modality of treatment uh, dialysis right. in district now. So uh, indeed, in Stanley Medical Hospital in Chennai, Dr. Georgi had inaugurated this uh, wing where for the poor people, you know, like he said, why do you have to suffer with he hemodialysis where they can't go to work? You know, they have to come every day to yeah. hospital. So PD yeah. is now everywhere. Is now he has started that in uh, Stanley Medical. He's initiated that a lot of poor people are getting covered. 
But regards, you know, people like us for insurance, I'm really not sure. But it's there, ma'am. It is yeah, there. It is there. Okay. That's wonderful. I, that's actually, you know, a, a big boon for a lot of people because everybody assumes, you know, PD is more expensive than hemodialysis. But if you ask me personally, I'll say that's not the case. Absolutely. Because if you check out the rates, you know, for each session, which you do maybe thrice a week and you do it, it's almost the same. And what happens in hemodialysis is a person has to, you know, come along with you to the hospital. You know, they have to sit with you, you know, uh, someone, they have to feed you through the sessions and, you know, you need to go back the transportation and things like that. It is more expensive if you ask me. Whereas in PD, you know, like you're at home, you do your PD session in the morning, go have your breakfast, do your work. I used to cook, I used to clean. For the past two, three years now, I'm not doing it because I'm more uh, into farming right now. But uh, b before that, you know, like I had a young daughter. She was just three years old when I fell sick. So throughout her, till her 12th standard, I took care of her education. I used to take tuitions for neighboring children. I have done uh, catering as a business. And after three years, I quit because I shifted my house. And right now, I'm also doing clothing business. So I get people to, you know, supply to me. And so you can almost live, you know, you can do, you can earn your own money. You can live your life the way you want to live. And I think PD is a boon for that. Uh, the next question was, how many hours do we have to do every day? Also, can we do our own or someone has to go? No, don't ask anybody to help you. Actually, you know, people will start getting irritated after some time, you know. Like they'll start telling, oh, it's becoming a pain. Why should you? You can do it yourself. It's not at all, you know, it's not like nuclear science or it's not like hemodialysis where, you know, you have to be totally gloved and, you know, covered. And No, this you do your routines of cleaning your hands and wearing a mask during the process. You don't have to let anybody into the room. You can do it yourself. And I think that's the best way to do instead of depending on anybody else. And how many hours? See, I do four exchanges per day. Like Dr. Anam Urmila was telling, it depends on the peritoneum's uh, ability, you know, how it's known as transponding, how fast or how slow it does it. Because I'm a fast transponder, I have a, a prescription of four, four exchanges a day. But for slower people, they'll have three or whatever it is, the doctors will decide. Because they do the pet test, they decide on that and they'll, uh, you know, guide us through it. So that is not a problem. And uh, do, even doing four exchanges a day, it's just half an hour per exchange. That's just two hours. You know, it's not a big amount of uh, time. And you, in, that, in those two hours also, I would suggest, you know, people can use it to retrospect. The half an hour is entirely for you, right? You can do whatever you want. You can think of all the positive things. What I basically do is when I'm draining, I think every day, all the uh, diseases in me, all the faults in me are coming out. And when I feel, I, I tell myself, and I'm filling myself with a lot of positivity. This actually helps because uh, any disease for that matter, it's not just kidney failure, needs you to have a proper attitude, you know, towards your life and towards how you're handling the disease. And I think doctors play a very important role in that. Like Dr. Urmila is so encouraging. That's how my doctor, Dr. Georgi, was also. He would never let us and he will always push us, you know, beyond our boundary. He said, who says you can't do? You can do. You. He's so proud of me now that I do farming. He says, I have to come and see your farm one day. You know, that's the limit to which we can achieve, you know. And kidney failure cannot be a deterrent, you know, for us to achieve what we want to do in life or how we want to live our lives. I'm not telling everybody has to go only into farming. You will have your passions in life. Let this not stop you from achieving that. Uh, then uh, I think I have a few more questions. I'll just go through this. Uh, my problem is uh, BP. I have low BP after my PV dialysis. Yeah. Uh, there's been a question that uh, uh, they have low BP after peritoneal dialysis. Actually, 
you if you start taking care of your fluid intake it won't be so uh, in summer when it's very hot i sweat a lot and when i do 2.5 i feel more drained and my bp goes down so in summer doctor has told me do 3 1.5 exchanges and one 2.5 in the night so that takes care of our fluid balance and your bp will not go low but if you do 2.5 or 4.5 in summer when it's very hot in the afternoon yes you will feel this way because a lot of uh, fluid is being taken out okay excess fluid comes out when the strength of the solution is higher so let's not do that you know like that you can ask your doctor they will definitely help you out like dr urmila was telling no like for 1.5 you had have around 200 uh, excess output for uh, 2.5 we have around 500 uh, ml excess for 4.5 we have almost 600 to 700 and in 7.5 you get it more than 7.5 up to almost 1 liter so it depends on what the climate is like see when it is very cold in chennai live in chennai when it's cold in chennai which is not really very often but on cold days i make sure i do two 2.5s and two 1.5s that keeps my uh, liquid uh, my uh, fluid inside the body stable actually this i did go through when i was in the initial stages i used to use 2.5 and in summer when i used two 2.5s and two 1.5s for the four exchanges by evening like my bp would be low and i will be so sozzled and when i went and told dr georgie he said no you start doing this make it 3 1.5s and 1 2.5 in the night because the dwell time is longer in the night so that should help you uh, keep your balance you know of fluid you will not have low bp problems there i think i have answered one of your questions i'll just check out the next one is pd better for 70 year old person yeah there someone who asked me if pd is better for a 70 year old person absolutely no problem because i had a friend who was 75 when she started pd uh and uh, she continued on pd till 83 okay till she passed away but she passed away doing pd well but she had other complications and it was much safer for her to do pd than to do hemodialysis she is also one of dr georgie's patients and uh, she was she would at 70 do her own pd she never expected anybody in the house to do it you won't believe she was a brahman lady so she would make her own meals because she wouldn't let anybody else touch it she would make breakfast lunch dinner she would go to uh, she was near the iskon krishna temple she would go to the temple every day she had a absolutely proper normal lifestyle till the day she passed away she did it till 83 anything else okay so uh, apart from this i think i have a few more that have been sent to me <coughs> just give me a second sorry uh shanti while you're looking at your questions mm. uh, dr urmila the question for you that is come on live is um, someone considering transplant in the future would you recommend a peritoneal dialysis yes actually i mentioned that and said this is a bridge to transplant yes a pd gives you many advantages first you maintain your nutrition you don't come to the hospital for hemodialysis and get into trouble with infections if you pick up a hepatitis b or hepatitis c which is common in your person in our patient patient population you delay your transplant then you have to treat your hepatitis c then true transplant and okay. the pd catheter in the abdomen is in no way prevents you from doing a transplant okay. many of us many of our patients have a pd catheter and you can either remove it before the during the time of the surgery or you can keep it see the p the kidney is put retroperitoneum behind the peritoneum okay. you do the dialysis inside the peritoneum so the two things are separate compartments of the abdomen you can remove the catheter if you are confident that your kidney is going to work immediately you can remove it during surgery 
but most of us keep the catheter for 48 to 72 hours when the transplant works. And if the transplant works, then we remove the PD. Removing PD catheter is just a yank, yeah. a small nick and dust out. It's not a major, as she said, rocket science or a nucleus science. Okay. So yes, in fact, many of us given an opportunity on, see, I work in Hyderabad. We have patients outside Hyderabad. There are lots of areas, remote areas, cities like Warangal, Nizamabad, Khammam, where hemodialysis facilities are there, but they're not that of superior quality. They pick up infections during their dialysis catheter. So we all put them on PD, send them there. When their family is ready to give kidney or their uh, disease donation is come up, comes up, patients have waited for six months to one year or two years. And then they come back for transplant. I find that a very, very easy way of handling patients who are waiting for transplant. Uh, Thank there, you, Dr. There's been another query uh, where they've asked, can we do PD while traveling? Yes, we can. Uh, I wouldn't suggest while traveling in the car, but I would say I have traveled to temples, you know, because uh, they are around seven hours away from Chennai. I would do an early morning uh, PD at home and then I would travel for six hours, go to my hotel and they would give us, you know, really good hotels. The hotel staff are so empathetic when we tell them, you know, like we need a clean room and things like that. They do. And we, the minute I reach the hotel, I would do my dialysis and we can start, you know, like it's not at all difficult to do while traveling. And another point I wanted to tell was when Dr. Urmila was telling about uh, uh, transplant and uh, peritoneal dialysis, I'm, I've had a transplant three years after I started PD and uh, they did not disturb my peritoneal setup at all. Okay, I was given a new kidney and it worked well, but unfortunately I developed TB. So they had and uh, it uh, went and affected my new kidney, the transplanted kidney. So we removed it and again within a month I was back on to PD. And for 18 years now I've been doing it. So it's not a big thing. It's actually PD will help you recuperate better after a transplant or a surgery. Indeed, I've even had my uh, parathyroids and my thyroids removed. But it didn't in any way affect my peritoneal dialysis. That just keeps going, like it works like our kidneys, our normal kidneys do. It was a very good question. Yeah. If infected with peritonitis, if infected mm -hmm. peritonitis is one severe infection that could be life threatening, your views on it? Yeah, someone has asked about peritonitis and it, that it could be life threatening. I totally agree. You know, uh, we have to be careful because I've had peritonitis twice. The first time I had it, I was not aware of what was happening. Mm -hmm. I had severe nausea, vomiting, my BP fell low. It came to 60, 40. They kept me in a chair and took me to the hospital and things like that. Yes, it took me four days to get out of it. And uh, my doctors were continuously monitoring me. And it was something really difficult to cope with because all my vitals had fallen down. I had severe dysentery without any control, nausea, and you know, they had to give me uh, 24 hour attention, you know, to do it. Yes, it could be life threatening. So we have to make sure that we don't get into that thing. It can be prevented so easily, peritonitis. I realized it after, after the first time. The second time I got it, it was because of uh, a liquid that was a little infected, but I was so clear. I said, what is this? The, the tube was leaking, you know, when I was doing. Then I knew immediately it would lead to peritonitis. So immediately I cut it off and I put a new bag, flushed it out, put another bag, flushed it out and rushed to the hospital. And then Dr. Millie uh, took care of me. She said, it is good that you came immediately. And they gave me antibiotics and, you know, they helped me. But, you know, you should be aware, you know, like Dr. Urmila was telling have a look out onto your bag. Your bag is the best thing, you know, like it will tell you immediately if there's an infection inside. See, uh, all you need to do is just keep a normal piece of printed paper underneath. And as your uh, fluid is draining, if you see that you cannot read what is underneath, then it means there's a slight infection. Immediately go to the doctor with that bag. 
they will help you they will give you the antibiotics and they will immediately the minute you start you know prolonging it and saying oh let's see the next bag or later on and wait for symptoms these symptoms of severe dysentery and nausea is when the infection is really bad in the peritoneum and you know very high infection and peritoneal uh, membrane inside the peritoneum could cause to a fail in the peritoneal membrane and it will not let you do dialysis after that why should you take the, take it that far you know it's such a wonderful boon you know the peritoneal membrane that we have that instead of going through hemodialysis you can live such a wonderful life you should take care make sure that your hands are clean make sure that you wear a mask when you're doing your you can definitely prevent check your bag you know there there are some uh, there's an acronym for checking our bag every time we do the dialysis which my doctor taught me when i started it's called places i'm not sure if i remember everything p is the port that the, the green cap l is check if there are any leaks in the bag okay a is um, uh, i don't know a what it is c is the clarity of the fluid that you're going to use e is the expiry date check the expiry date s is the strength make sure you're doing the right strength 1.5 2.5 or whatever has been prescribed to you supposing you've done a 1.5 and you next have to do a 2.5 don't do a 1.5 then because there won't be much ultra filtration and then you'll wonder why your legs are bloating or your knees are paining okay if we take care of these things you can totally avoid uh, peritonitis uh, a touch wood you know like i have not had peritonitis after the first two times in these 18 years anything else um uh, is the pd machine portable the pd machine is portable but uh, if you want to travel is it yes it is portable but i have never used it i have only used capd the gravity the manual one yes doctor the, one, the pd machine is called pack extra that means it's an extra luggage nothing yes. more than that yes i have had patients who have traveled from india to amsterdam london everywhere mm -hmm. all you need to alert your company of pd fluids in that country that you are traveling there you carry your machine mm -hmm. go there the fluids will be give delivered to your stay yes. where you stay anywhere in the world you can do it yes. so the machine is not very and the newer ones are almost 3 and 1/2 to 4 kg it's just that's a that. it's called pack extra that's why it's an extra luggage nothing that's else Doc, you don't have to carry your fluids nothing not your connecting machines the wires or anything everything will be given to you uh, at your destination so there is no worry in that just asking a very layman question doctor is there a limitation when you do a flight travel on the fluids that we can carry or there's no limitation on that you don't have to carry no you just don't have to carry see oh, if okay. you're on a machine automated machine you okay, are okay. doing a pd today and then uh, if you let's say you have a stop over at dubai dubai is 4 hours an automated yeah. pd gives you 8 to correct almost 16 hours of time no without doing any analysis okay. even then if you need an exchange you carry one single bag do your pd with yeah. manually in dubai and the next 6 7 hours you are in netherlands correct. or uh, i mean 8 hours in uh, uk or U western europe yeah. it's only when you're traveling from here to united states then you need to plan it in such a way that you don't stop at dubai and you stop at uk or frankfurt or something you can you can carry a couple of bags they allow you to carry as much as possible but you really don't need to carry your stocks the stocks are delivered that international companies for seniors and baxter they deliver it to you anywhere in the world that kind of arrangement is there for pd okay doc i have one another question on uh, peritonitis we had uh, shanti giving us her uh, experience which was so useful can you give me your perspective uh, on in your experiences that you could have had with other patients whether uh, as shanti says she, in 18 years she had had two episodes of peritonitis okay. so that means if you look into mathematically one every 9 years she has okay. done well in india it is one in 60 months so most of our patients usually don't have in the, and most of my patients are actually bridge to transplant rarely the elderly gentlemen and the children 
who are on PD for um, let's say more than five, six years. My perspective of peritonitis is like Shanti's. If you take care of yourself, it's eminently treatable. Look at your symptoms, don't neglect it. Come to medical attention, it is treatable. I have never lost a catheter. I have never had to remove a PD catheter except in one patient. That patient had tuberculosis. In an earlier days, it was thought that you need to take out a TB catheter. If you have an infection in, in the abdomen because of TB, now even we don't need to do that. We give the tuberculous medicines and you can continue with the catheter. True. I have, I don't have that much of experience, but then I had once upon a time, I had almost 150 patients on PD. And I have not, uh, I have not lost patients because of peritonitis. As Shanti tells you, most of our patients are lost because of the underlying problem. You know, uh, the problem with PD is we choose one of the worst patients for PD. The patient who is not fit for hemodialysis is mm, sort of told to go for PD. So when your patient comes to PD, they are anyway one of the most difficult patients who have not done well on hemodialysis or not fit on that. That means their underlying problems, their bad heart, their strokes, their uh, other problems, bad vessels, that takes you to PD. So at the end of the day, we lose patients who are doing well on PD, but because of their other problems. Right. So peritonitis rarely kills if it is taken care of early. Properly. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor. Yeah. There was a, another question about a person asking if it could lead to hernia. It doesn't. See, the problem is like Dr. Urmila was telling, take care of your constipation and all that. I am not constipated because Dr. Georgie has guided me how I should, uh, you know, plan my nutrition. There should be enough fiber. There should be enough protein. There should be enough fat so that you're not, see, even you take care of your nutrition properly and you don't have constipation, you're not, uh, you know, uh, getting constipated. Hernia problems are very less. But if you already have existing problems, you know, like hernia, and then you start PD, then you have to take care of that, you know, like your doctors can definitely guide you. And it is, it doesn't become a surgical problem, which I have seen with other pay, PD patients who are my friends. Uh, it can be handled. It is not a big thing. The next question was, will we gain a lot of weight? Yes, if you don't, you know, take care of what you're eating, <laughs> yes, you will. Uh, see, we should have a minimum uh, quantity, you know, we should not eat like we used to eat earlier. And watch what you're eating, watch the eat the right things. See, there was one uncle, you know, who used to love biryani. And he would ask for mutton biryani and chicken, uh, mutton uh, curry with it. And she would go lamenting, you know, that auntie says, why don't you tell this man not? He put, started putting on a lot of weight because of that. Then Dr. Georgie told him, no, you will have to cut down all, all these because that's high cholesterol. You eat little also, you know, you'll start putting on weight. Watch what you're, what you're eating, you know, eat the right kind of things. We need to have protein intake, good protein intake every day because we lose a lot of protein in the fluid. But it doesn't mean you should overeat it, you know, to exudate the egg whites alone. That's what Dr. Uh, Georgie has given me, you know, as my meal plan. And he tells me have chicken twice a week or fish. He recommends fish, you know, because he says that's the best kind of meat which will give you protein. In vegetarian options, you have tofu, you have paneer, make salads with that and eat. These will keep you filled but won't put on weight. Anything else? Great. Um, Shanti, do you have any more uh, questions that have been fed to you? Sorry, any more? Any more questions that you would want to answer? I, I think I have answered most of them. Okay. I'd just like to tell one small parting uh, word or sentences, I should say. See, don't give up on anything. You know, these are small things in life. Uh, people have been really very surprised at the kind of spirit I have. It's not to boast, but I'm telling you this only because it's one life we have and I think we should live it to the full and do things that, you know, keep us really happy and uh, give us a sense of achievement. 
Dr. Georgie has always, you know, pushed me to that and you has told me you're an achiever, you can do it. He was the one who was behind my video also. He said, no, you should do something. I want people to see your video on YouTube and get inspired. It need not be just kidney failure patients, but it can be anybody who's going through an illness, why you should not give up. Uh, if all of you, you know, you could go and have a visit and check out the video because it talks about how I felt sick. You know, initially, the early years, I was as, you know, uh, unaware of kidney problems till it really hit me. But yes, now that it has come to me, I have done a lot of work on it. And my our doctors are actually wonderful. You know, if you are willing to ask, they will explain. Indeed, in my video, if you see, Dr. Georgie would have explained why PD is so good, like how Dr. Urmila explained, na? Uh, the, how the toxins are removed and things like that. So I think uh, you should go and have a visit, you know, visit that video. And there are many other doctor's videos, you know, which are very helpful. Don't give up, you know, because there's so many wonderful options of treatment nowadays. There is nothing that is, you know, uh, stopping us from going and living our life. Just because, you know, you have P dialysis, no. We should go ahead and, you know, reach for the stars. That's a wonderful spirit. That's a one minute. There's one more yeah. question. That's yeah, yeah, one Can minute. I swim if I have, uh, with the CAPD? Uh, there's somebody who's asked me if they can swim with P CAPD. I would suggest no, because even when we have a bath, we are only advised a bucket bath, never a tub bath or a, even a shower bath. So, because uh, the water might contaminate and give your exit site problems. Am I right, Dr. Urmila? Depends on which part of the world you are talking of. All <laughs> my patients in Canada swim like nobody's business. Okay, okay. And they use a two-piece bikini also. Sometimes they show their <laughs> catheter hanging around. It depends. In India, our water quality is not very good. That's, That's the good, biggest yeah. problem. And you yeah. get wet. You need to change your dressings. Amazing. And if you have a loose exit, Side when the catheter sort of moves around, it creates the water to enter the tunnel. Correct. So in India, we we so not be so adventurous. Mm -hmm. But if you are okay. if you have a privilege, if you can immigrate to my uh, Canada or uh, some okay. of this, yeah. the Scandinavian okay. countries, where I have seen patients on PDs flaunting their PD transfer set around and going for swimming also. Okay. So there is no problem. That's all. That's wonderful. There is, there is a question for One minute. the doctor. Mm. I take dialysis less frequently. Is PD recommended? Uh, doctor, there's a question for you. I take dialysis less frequently. Is PD recommended? That's a very wrong question. You should never take any dialysis less frequently. Oh. <laughs> All dialysis should be taken at the appropriate dose. Yes. And if you shift to PD, all it tells us that your residual function may be good. So the doctor must have told you that you have some kidney function, so you don't need regular dialysis. I mean, you don't need three times a week, you need two times. Let's shift to PD. You save all your kidney functions as long as possible. Okay. Right. And you may not need PD um, that as much as three or four exchanges. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a concept called incremental dialysis. There are patients with heart failure who are very breathless, mm -hmm. but their kidney function is not so bad. All you need is one exchange of a PD, remove all the water and you're good to go. Similarly, if you don't need twice a week dialysis, then you can always come to PD, do a single exchange or two exchange. The biggest advantage in doing this is you are preserving your kidney function. Moment you move from your medicines to hemodialysis, you are in the hands of the devil. He is going to suck your kidney dry completely and there will be no urine left. So if it is a question of preserving your kidney function, discuss with your doctor and ask him, will PD help me? Instead of going to the hospital two times a week or once a week, will it help me if I do a single exchange of PD or alternate day, one day, one, every day, two? These are called incremental dialysis. Mm. You increase your um, dialysis dose as your kidney function worsens. There are many people, as she said, any rich patient who have no urine output, you can manage by tweaking with an automated machine or an extra exchange or icodextrin, and you can even continue dialyzing people who have no kidney function. Yes. So it all depends. Uh, you talk to your doctor, he will be able to guide you. That's it. Okay.
I think this has been one of the most knowledgeable and one of the most positive session. Uh, thanks to the two wonderful ladies here and uh, the spirit that Shanti is carrying that is wonderful and I think everyone will learn from it. So the situation depends on how you look at it, right? And ma'am, your way of looking at this situation is wonderful and everybody can take away from this. And uh, thank you, Dr. Runmila, for the wonderful knowledgeable session. And uh, I think a lot of people will benefit from this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you, thank, thank you, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Shanti, thank yeah. you very much. And I, I, we, we believe in our medical practice, it is the patient's voice which makes the maximum impact. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you once again, Dr. Urmila and uh, Ms. Shanti on behalf of Kidney Warriors. It's such a privilege, like Ashit said, to have both you beautiful uh, women on this uh, on this series. I think you are so knowledgeable, and uh, it, it's such a feel good session. So thank you, thank you so much for so much of positive energy, love, information. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.